Hi, welcome to Bass Habits episode number 65. Today we'll be taking a look at Robert D. Leo, bass player of Stone Temple Pilots. While initially rising to fame as part of the grunge movement of the early 90s, the music of Stone Temple Pilots expressed a variety of influences over time, which include psychedelic rock, bossa nova and classic rock. The band's evolution throughout the years involved periods of commercial highs and lows, separations, reunions and legal proceedings. Though normally identified with former singer and founding member Scott Wayland, brothers Dean and Robert DiLeo can be considered the core of the band. Not only Robert is an excellent bass player, but he also wrote or co-wrote most of the songs that made the band famous in the early 90s. Right out of Wikipedia, quote, Robert DiLeo is known for his smooth style of playing with infusions of jazz, rhythm and blues and hard rock, creating a rather distinctive tone. His primary influence is legendary bassist James Jamerson, unquote. So what are the main aspects of his style? Number one thing to point out is the Leo's natural tendency to play staccato. Check out this video the band recorded to announce they were looking for a singer. You can tell right away he grew up listening to Motown. And this is a theme that will be constant throughout STP's discography. Number two, the Lydian note. About Stone Temple Pilots bass lines, the second thing to observe is that they're really melodic. On a few occasions especially, the bass parts have a distinct Lydian quality, due to DeLeo implementing the augmented fourth in the part. Plush is a good example. Number 3, the DiLeo boxes. Though very creative and unusual when it comes to no choice, Robert DiLeo has two favorite boxes that keep coming up. The first box uses root, fourth below, or the fifth one octave lower, and major third. Second box is made with a major triad plus the octave. Number 4. Pauses The Leo's masterful use of pauses is the real cornerstone of many of Stone Temple Pilots tracks. Once again, we'll be looking at Plush. While the guitar keeps playing chords, the bass, which strategically placed pauses, provides the real pause of the song. This is very evident on the verse. Oh, and I see these are last to come. And in the break. On tripping on a hole in a paper heart, the empty spaces left by D. Leo are the element that really pushes the main riff. Out, 
Once again, it's not the notes you play, it's the notes you don't play. Delia brings personality, musical knowledge and melodic playing to the mix. As one of the primary writers behind STP's material, the music is laced with integral bass parts including punchy, articular rhythms and soul-inspired grooves. On Sour Girl, the bass provides the actual hook of the song in the intro, acting like a lead guitar, and pushes the track with its staccato 8 notes. Contrary to most bass players of the genre, Delia rarely sticks to the root or fifth, and besides the boxes we spoke about, he often relies on the sixth. And the fourth, like on the super melodic intro of Art School Girl. This brings jazzy sophistication to rock bass playing, as well as mirroring some of the intricate guitar work. Speaking of guitar, I had to point out the way DeLeo fills the gaps, throwing in licks in the spaces left by his brother Dean. Of course, DeLeo can also be really heavy at times, backing up the guitar for a massive effect. Or rely on good old octave jumps. But for the most part, it's really melodic and creative bass lines that take SCP's game up a notch. It's the Jamerson vibe into the context of a hard rock group. So don't forget to let me know in the comments what you think about Robert DeLeo and what bass players you would like me to review next. Thank you very much for watching this video, please subscribe, leave us a comment and follow me on Instagram for more.